everyone, welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I make my mould for my sculptures using silicon and resin. <laughs> so the sculpture that I'm going to make is this little guy, I don't know if you can see him very well. But he's one of the easy ones, I've not done one like this before. He's got quite a flat bottom to him, so he should be pretty easy, I don't know how it's going to go, but we will see. As you can see, he doesn't have a tail, he's tailless. When they're made out of resin, you can't put them back in the oven to cook, and I really like using polymer clay and all the different coloured clays to make big bushy tails, whereas I can't when it's resin, so I'm just not going to mould the tail, I'll just make them separately and then stick them on. So I've started doing the tail for him, but like, and then you just you plop the tail in like that. But I won't be able to do like this kind of design on resin, so I'm just going to make the tails all separate and they can all have different separate tails and all different colours and it's going to be really cool, hopefully, if I do it properly. All right, so to make my sculptures, I use silicon. So I normally buy this silicon from eBay. It's quite cheap. It's normally around twenty pound for a kilogram, and I normally get it like this. I mean, I love the little the little um, tubs they come in. They're so cute. But this is the one I've got. I don't normally use this one. This is the first time I'm gonna be using this one. I normally use like a pink one. So, but this one is I think it's orange. Anyway, you get like a kilogram of silicon. And then you get like 0.1 kilograms of the catalyst, I think it's called. And so you put quite, you put 10, right, just say you put 10 grams of this in, or 10 milliliter, I don't know, 10 of something of this one, you'd put one in this, so the ratio is 1 to 10. There we go, got it in the end. So that is what I use, and always use gloves when you use this stuff, and a proper respirator mask, well ventilated area eye safety, all that. We want to be safe when we do these things. We don't want any injuries when we do it. And another like little piece of equipment that I like to use are these. <laughs> I don't know what they're actually called. I'll put the name in the description below. I've got a very odd name. They're like prongs or tongs, something like that. But it's very hard to find these ones. They're the ones that like surgical ones. So you pop them in and then open up. And you'll see why later, why I use these. They're very helpful, honestly. These are like a lifesaver. This is the sculpture that we're going to be moulding today. Hopefully I can just use a one part mould because he's flat on the bottom. So we can just pull mould on and then pull it apart and just have him inside. I've never actually done a one part mould. So this is going to be a new experience. We're going to see how it goes, see if it works. I think I need, before we mould him, I think I just need to fix him up because his back's very, uh, <laughs> I might fix him up before we try. Also he's got a very skinny neck. For some reason with my sculptures, it's either they've got no neck and the head just connects to the chest or they've got a very skinny neck. We'll see. I'll try and fix him before we move on to doing the mould box. Okay, so to start off with, I'm going to make the mould box and how I make my mould boxes, I use leftover notebooks, especially ones that have got like the hardback. So I've ripped all of the pages out and then if I take this wire off, I can use this for my armatures and then literally I'll just put that glue gun it and then pop four walls round and that's how I make my mould boxes. Nice, cheap, easy way. And you get free armature wire, how good is that? Okay, so there's wire for my armature and now I've got two bits for me mold boxes, so now I just need three more. So using a glue gun, I glued the bottom of the wolf onto one of the notebook covers. I'd recommend when making the mould box to leave probably a one centimetre or more of space between the sculpture and the walls of the box. Found if there isn't enough room sometimes the mould can be quite soft and it can distort your sculpture when you're moulding it. To keep the walls all nice and together I just used the glue gun again.
So now that we've got our mould box all done, now we need to find out how much silica we need to put in in order to cover our sculpture completely. So what I do is I get a, I like to get a jug that's got millilitres on the side and I'll fill it right to the top, so 550. And then once that's filled with water, I'll pour it into my mould box and then I'll see how much water's left and then take away how much has been put in that makes any sense. Be sure to do this over a sink because even though we've glued all the bottom water gets everywhere and it will might leak out so you need to be quick pouring this into there. Alternatively you can use sand, sand's really good, sand won't leak everywhere but it is a bit of a pain trying to get it off your sculpture so it depends on which one you want to do. So I'm going to go and do that and then we'll start mixing up the mould. So all the water's done I've dried off my sculpture inside and I found that there's actually more than this amount that's going into here so I might have to do two of these buckets which is fine we'll just see how far it goes so now we're going to mix some silicon up hopefully I've got enough for this mould <laughs> that'll be fun won't it now hey this is the silicon I'm using I've just got it off eBay it's, this is a litre or a kilogram worth of silicon and then I have the mixer in with it the catalyst so always read the instructions on your silicon because each one is different. This one is a 1 to 10 ratio. So it says here, so for every 100 grams of this that you use, you use 10 grams of this. So for me, I'm going to do 500 for now. So I'll need 500 grams of this stuff and then 50 grams of this. So now it's time to put our gloves on and all of our safety stuff. Okay, so I've got my silicon, my catalyst, I've got a jug to mix the silicon, I've got a stick to stir the silicon, and I've got my scales. So they're, li they're literally just kitchen scales. When I pour the silicon, I tend to just pour all the catalyst in at the same time and then mix it thoroughly, making sure to get the bottom of the thing I'm mixing in and all the sides. You don't want any uncured silicon in the mould. It's horrendous. It's like soft and gross and it'll just ruin everything and you'll have to start all again. So make sure that you completely mix thoroughly. As you can see, the silicon has leaked under my model, which is a bit of a pain in the butt, but it's okay though, because I can just cut the silicon with a craft knife. I think in future I'll just use sticky tape instead of the glue gun, 
because the glue gun seems to sort of like push it up a little bit so the silicon go up underneath but it's no problem all i need to do is just get the silicon flaps and just cut them off that's all we need problem resolved We're using a really, really, really sharp craft knife. I normally get a new blade for this process, to be honest. But with a really, really sharp craft knife, I cut into the mold in kind of like a zigzaggy pattern. Just helps with the mold locking back together again and stopping resin from seeping out if you do it this way. This right, I should have just done a two part mold to be fair. Whoops, no wonder I haven't done this before, it's very difficult. Already snapped his leg and his arm off, but we'll, we'll get him out, we'll get him there. We'll just gotta pull. <laughs> God, this is hard, I feel like this is a two person job. I don't think I'll be making this type of mold again, to be honest. I think I'll just make me two part mold. I know how to make them, <laughs> I can make them. These ones, maybe not. God, just won't come out. It's like he's stuck on something, but I don't know what. <coughs> it's his head. It's his fat head. It's stuck on it's something. It's his ears. Ah, that's what it is. If I can get him out, I can cut more things. <coughs> it's like giving birth, even though I've never done that. But you know, <coughs> oh, he's <coughs> Oh my god, this is so heavy as well. Like, no wonder it took like a whole kilogram. Jeez, he's out, he's out, he's lost a leg. Johnny, I got no legs. <laughs> right, I can put his I can put his legs back on. That is no problem. I'll fix you. I will I will fix you up. And we may do it again. <laughs> well this time differently, but I've used up all my moulds that I've got. So I'll have to buy some more mould. Where's your other leg? Oh no! <laughs> I've lost your leg. <laughs> Wait, where is it? You're still in there now. There's all weird black bits that have come off, which is a bit odd. Right, what What were you stuck on? In here, it was his head. It's your ears. It's definitely your ears. I know, I dread to think what this is going to look like as an actual mould. I feel like there's going to be lots of bubbles and areas that have like bubbles. Oh no, I forgot your arm broken. There we go. Fixed. Fine. It's done. Oh my oh gosh, what do you think? I don't feel like this is going to bode well whatsoever, but we could always try and I'm definitely going to make him into a two-part mould. Because I can do that. I can do two-part moulds. I just can't do like this. I thought it'd be like, oh, popped him out, but it's, it's ears. His ears will cause me problems when I was putting the mould in. <laughs> and they've caused me problems now and it's so thick where there isn't anything actually in the mould. So all this bit where his bum was, it's just pure thick silicon. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see what happens. Might be a very expensive mistake, but it's a mistake and we'll learn from it, hopefully. Now, where, where is his leg? Where did I put his leg? You think I'd tidy considering how much I lose, but I never do. Where's, where's his leg? Aha, uh -huh, I found it. Found his little foot. Which I can just fix again. Let's put his little leg on. There we go. Put your arm on. Good as new. We'll put some bacon bond on you. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Right, so this bit. Oh, now it's time to put resin in the mould. I'm kind of dreading it, to be honest, but we'll see what happens. If this mould is a complete disaster, I can cut it up into little tiny pieces and I can use it for another mould. Right, here we go. Get the silicon sheet out because resin will stick to everything. You right, and the mold all leaked everywhere. I thought it'd be fine, but no, it's just leaked. It's just it's been a disaster. It's been a disaster. This thing, we'll see. Won't be doing that again. At least the glue comes off pretty well. 
Oh, I dread what will happen. I need some elastic bands. So I'll just put... Oh, God. Oh, no. It's just... It's going to not end well. I can see it now. <laughs> there's omens. There's omens at play. You don't want me to do whatever it is this is. It's going to make some kind of horrible abomination. Something that I'm thinking is going to happen. Get off it. Is that... When the resin, right, he's got no leg. When the resin flows in, it's gonna make an air bubble here and just not have any lower jaw. That is my assumption. That is what I think is gonna happen. We will see. <laughs> oh, we will see what will happen. Doesn't bode well, though, to be fair. Right. I keep forgetting his legs aren't attached. <laughs> Let's put you over there. Let's see how this is going. It's all nice and charred. Hopefully, I can get it out of the mould. <laughs> God, it's heavy. Oh, it hasn't leaked out the seam. like it and there's not that many air bubbles that i can see even under the there's a few under the chin but not horrendously bad oh yay i can fix that oh it worked like i thought it was a failure but it worked it worked pretty well oh god i have to work out trying to get that open my god <laughs> i definitely will use less next time and definitely do a two-part mold rather than a one part mould for something like this. If it was like flat flat, then I would, but it didn't have like sort of the chin underneath and the ears. They're the hardest to get out, but woof, not bad. And also I'd put the feet more together because the silicon there is a bit fragile and I'm worried that that's gonna snap one time, but that's that's a, a an odd success. I really didn't think that it would come out well. I thought like half of his face would be missing. Yes so happy with that gonna make a few more see how long this mold will last but i don't think it'll last that long because i've really gotta like pull it apart to get it but i am so happy with that like i can't believe i've actually done it <laughs> you lost a leg we've lost some limbs and at the bottom i'll probably need to do a little bit more but i can fill that in with resin that's not a problem oh yay you did it and it doesn't look too bad Okay, so this is the fruit of this mould. I've made a few of them. I may have made one, two, three, four. I've made five at the moment, and I think they look pretty good considering how they look against the original. So this is the original one, which was the black one. And then these are the subsequent moulds from it. And now I really like them. I think they look good. I'll have to say, like, with the bottom, because I did a glue gun, sometimes I have to put some epoxy clay on the bottom of like most of them but that one was okay that one didn't seem too bad um 
I just noticed that I had to cut sort of around it because the resin went a little bit too far and with the mould it's a little bit jaggedy but other than that I, I really like how these have turned out considering I only did a one part mould they're actually really good and the eyes are nice and glossy I'm really happy with that I honestly thought that this was going to be one of those projects that I just threw in the bin because the way I did it I was like oh no I've used way too much silicon I've had to cut it in like three different places it was just it, it seemed like it would fail but it's fun really really good and I'm so happy with the results I mean look they're like exactly the same they're like replicas I cannot wait to start molding these right so all the mold is done I've made my replicas I'm really really impressed with this mold like considering how thick and heavy it is it's really worked like really well like considering i've cut like loads of places in it like there's literally three different parts where i've cut into it i think i've done pretty well like to be honest i'm really impressed with this like i honestly thought when i was making it i thought i should have really done it into a two-part mold i've done a load of them but i've never really done a full mold and to be quite honest the amount of silicon that i used for this project it was a full kilogram of silicon and that is expensive that is expensive for a mold it's about 20 pound for this much silicon that i got from that one bottle i guess you could call it and the activator I, I don't know what you'd call it but it was a lot to be fair and i think next time i would definitely um i don't know because a two-part mold it, it goes so well like there's no line marks apart from sort of the chest bit which i cut myself and then obviously that little little paw of it then that was where it went but other than that like neither of them broke like nothing breaks when it comes out and i've got to admit like the hardest part of this mold is getting the face and the ears out so maybe that's a sculpting error maybe i should make the ears a little bit smaller <laughs> maybe that's what i need maybe i need smaller ears and i can just like pop them out a bit easier but a two-part mold might be the way to go next time i don't know considering how well this has gone and how well it catches the details i've made silicon molds before but it's i've done it on very kind of ah i don't know how you call it simple sort of designs i've never done it with like a proper face like this one but look at this look at them they're like they're so similar it's so good i'm so excited like look at them that one it's just it's so perfect and i can't wait to do tails and i can't wait to do different colors and i can't wait to do loads of different designs on them it's going to be fantastic i'm hoping as well to bring out a range where you can make your own so i'm going to literally do this and i'm going to give them a white tail and some white fur on the top and then hopefully people can paint their own and then they can see anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you might have learned something i mean i have i have learned loads for this one this video has been much more of a kind of learning experience for me as well as if you guys learnt for anything from it so i'm not an expert in mold making and i did make mistakes along the way but this is the result anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you learned something from it i would love to know if you guys like this kind of video if you want to see more of this kind of video if you want to see me trying out new things and seeing if i can do it and if i can how i do it yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did please leave a like or a comment in the section below and if you're not let <laughs> and if you're not yet subscribed to my channel just press the subscribe button at the bottom or the bell apparently that's important and i hope i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye guys